I recently installed permanent smart pot lights in my home following a renovation. The lighting, which you can see in my review here on the channel, is by a company called Lightline, and it uses the Wiz Smart Home Platform. To complement the installed pot lights or down lights, I opted to add a few accessories. I picked up two Edison bulbs to use in pendant fixtures in my kitchen, as well as a Wiz motion sensor, which should trigger the lights to turn on when someone approaches in my closet. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and I'll tell you about how these lights and accessories integrate with my new smart home lighting system, how well they work or don't, and whether I think they would be a good addition to your Wiz smart home. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video or finding it helpful to please hit that like button and do subscribe because it does help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there gets to watch, enjoy, and learn from. Installing these Edison bulbs is as simple as screwing in a light bulb, so there's not a whole lot of installation to worry about. What you do have to do is get the lights discovered by the Wiz app. Once you screw the bulbs in and turn them on, you'll open up the Wiz app and go into the room you want to add them into, or create that room if it's new, then ask the app to search for new lights. In my case, the app found my Edison bulbs right away, and I was able to add them to my home. Unfortunately, almost immediately, I realized that these bulbs had a wicked flicker. Assuming this was simply because the bulbs were on a setting that wasn't compatible with the Edison feel, I used the app to change the color temperature of the lighting and tried a few different presets in order to reduce the flicker. Now, the box says they work with Wiz's dynamic scenes, but they do only have one color, and that's warm white. And that is a bit confusing because, as you can see, a lot of the dynamic scenes have different color properties. I was actually really disappointed when I realized that no matter the setting or the brightness, the lights would just not stop flickering. And this was no minor annoyance or even a charming harkening back to the era when incandescent or Edison bulbs did have a very subtle flicker to them. This was practically a seizure-inducing flash that soon became unbearable after a very short time. I tried numerous things to get these bulbs to stop, but there was absolutely nothing that would rein in the flickering. Thinking it could just be simply that one fixture was the problem, I swapped the bulbs into another brand new light, and same story. After doing a little web searching, I was unable to find any type of fix for this, so I assumed that these Edison or filament bulbs are designed to do this, which is pretty disappointing. I'm simply looking for the warm glow and the cool effects that an Edison bulb will provide, not for the flashing. After less than an hour inside our pendant fixtures here, I had to remove the bulbs and I am taking them back to the store. Next up, I hoped I would have better luck using the Wiz motion sensor to trigger the lights on in my walk-in closet whenever I come in. Motion sensor technology is pretty standard, and many other lighting manufacturers do offer smart motion sensors, so I was confident this device would work exactly as it should. Unfortunately, it was not that easy. The motion sensor does not come with the needed two AA batteries, so you'll need to find and install some for yourself. That was a minor annoyance. Getting the batteries in will require a look at the instructions since the unit is screwed together and you will have to disassemble it to add them. Then you can add the motion sensor to your room. You do this by going into the Wiz app, choosing your room, and then selecting add device and choosing motion sensor. Fortunately, it was easy to add and it happened in seconds. Next, you can choose what the light will do once it detects that motion. You can have it turn on to a certain color or brightness, and this is customizable inside the app. You can also add a timeout feature where if no further motion is detected, the lights will shut off automatically until that next motion event is detected. When it came time to actually use the motion sensor, I realized it was far too sensitive for a lot of applications. The motion sensor unit has a range of a full 360 degrees around, as well as three meters distance, whether it's installed on a wall or a ceiling. That meant it was extraordinarily difficult to place this sensor because any type of motion anywhere around it or within that three meter or 10 foot radius was going to trip it. And just to give you an idea of how far that is, this is about three meters or 10 feet or so. And there's no way to actually shorten the motion detection distance or to have it only see to maybe one side or the other. With this unit, unfortunately, it's all or nothing. 
I tried a whole bunch of different placements around my room, near the door, inside the closet, even tried hiding the unit partially behind objects like vases or furniture. No matter where I seemed to place it, it was tripping the lights on any time someone entered the room, let alone got close to the closet or within that 10 foot distance. After studying the diagram included in the instructions, because I couldn't find any helpful tips or other information online, by the way, I measured out the distance and tried placing the motion sensor at the very back of my closet, which is just over 10 feet or three meters deep. After setting it on a shelf, I tried to trip the sensor to get the lights to come on, but oddly, after many attempts, no go. Feeling frustrated, I left the sensor for a bit. When I walked in an hour later, boom, on went the lights. Now we're getting somewhere and I was able to try to fine tune the distance. At first I placed the sensor at the edge of the recommended 10 foot distance so it would trip when I entered the doorway, but it wasn't activating so I moved the sensor closer to the door to within about 3 feet. Oddly, this seemed to be the sweet spot and I was able to get the lights to turn on as soon as I entered the doorway. Bottom line for me is that this motion sensor will work, but you should definitely prepare for a lot of trial and error in the placement so that you're not getting it triggered and turned on constantly. And oddly, in the wide open room, it seems to detect everything, but in my tiny closet, I had it shortened up substantially. Like I said, get ready for some trial and error. One last thing, I did find that sometimes the sensor would seemingly go crazy and it would keep turning the lights on repeatedly with no motion happening anywhere nearby. I'd have to turn the lights off at the switch or using the app, but they'd just keep coming on and staying on. Okay, so it's doing this thing now where I physically turn it off and seconds later, though I'm not doing anything, and then I'll try and turn it off again. And then seconds later, and then off again. Now this happens whether I'm using the wall switch or the app. So the motion sensor somehow, for some reason, just keeps tripping the lights on. So I have to go in and disconnect it. I found that by going into the app and disabling, then re-enabling the motion sensor after a short time, that did seem to fix it. For now, this is an intermittent enough problem that I'm not super worried about it, but I will be keeping an eye on this Wiz accessory. Overall, I'm not thrilled with how finicky these accessories are, but in the end, I guess I'm one for two. I'll be keeping the motion sensor, but the filament bulbs are going back to the store. They are just too unstable in this location where I'd like to use them. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I've talked about, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've got a full write-up. You can also ask me any questions you have about these devices, either there on the blog or, as always, here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always catch me on Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.com.